Well, Keith, we're, we're speaking in a week where Manchester City are very much in the spotlight. Um, and one of the heroes of this current City team is a man that you nurtured, I would suggest, at Barnsley. They call him the Barnsley Beckenbauer, um, John Stones. Uh, when you first came across John Stones, did you realise the potential that he had? Uh, we did. And we'd been, we'd been told about his potential as well by numerous people before we left Broxdale and went to Barnsley. So straight away when we went to Barnsley, he was a name to look out for. He was playing for the youth team. When you talk about nurture, I think a lot of his nurture uh, was natural from his parenting, from the way that he wanted to play the game. And obviously through the experience that he'd had in the, the youth culture and the academy at Barnsley. But as soon as we got to Barnsley, uh, we singled him out, uh, integrated him to the first team squad as quickly as we could. But also we had uh, a certain amount of patience that we had to have with him being such a young, uh, young player. I mean, it must make you laugh. You've been around football a long time that he's got this nickname, the Barnsley Beckenbauer. Um, he was obviously always seen as a footballing centre-half. Uh, did you know that he was capable of doing what he's doing now under Pep and play in midfield with, with the skills that he's showing? Yes, uh, there's no question about that. You could never question his footballing ability or his, his football brain, if you like. Uh, you know, he's got an exceptional football brain. He can uh, translate... Uh, what a manager asks for into performances. And when you talk about him, you know, moving into midfield, I think John Stones, like so many of the Man City players, they can actually, you know, think through almost Pep's brain, if you like, and in possession or out of position, uh, out of possession, they always seem to be in the right position. I don't think you can write down now, Manchester, Manchester City, you can write down the starting 11, but I don't think you can put it into a shape. I think the shape of Manchester City's lineup will depend on in possession or out of possession on where the ball is on the pitch. But with respect to John and his football intelligence, you can say it's nurtured. I think it's more natural as well. Uh, I think there's certain players in the game who understand football and probably understand the way that Pep thinks and can translate it into performances. And for me, John always had that. And we we was pleasantly surprised on how quick he could adapt how quick he could take that information on board and put it into a performance. He was a very, very quick learner, uh, very humble, um, got absolutely brilliant family values, life values. And, you know, as part of our protection process, we started playing as playing in the right back position. But we always knew he'd be a, a, a brilliant central defender and, and a player that could obviously play in defensive midfield. But like I said, you know, at other clubs, it might be a fixed position. But for Manchester City, I don't think he plays a fixed position. I think he's just a, a player with an incredible football and intelligence that can probably play anywhere, uh, you know, in Man City's team. I, I, I do honestly believe that. And I'm not saying that out of any other sort of like reason. That, and I think most, most Man City players can do. I think there's only really one fixed position in Manchester City's team, and that's the goalkeeper. Even he comes out and plays football a little bit, doesn't he? <laughs> he does. And I think that, again, it's fundamental. I think Pep talked about it the other week, how a goalkeeper is fundamental to the way Man City play. What was John like as a person? I mean, you've talked about his family, etc. He strikes me when I see the bits of video that City put out there, that he's, he's got a bit of a sense of humour. He's a bit of a, of a joker. Was he always like that when you dealt with him? Well, it was difficult for him being such a young player in a first-team environment. So I think at the time of his integration, he, he was quite humble, very quiet, wanted to take on it as much information, learn as much as he possibly could. But he was very respectful to the senior pros, the staff. And, uh, you know, I think he was just, you know, keeping his head down uh, and making sure that, uh, you know, he got the respect of everybody at the football club so that he could, you know, retain his ability to get opportunities and then perform very humble after after the game when we'd won. If we'd won, if we'd, we'd drawn, lost. You know, he always wanted to learn more. He always had a smile on his face. But you can tell now that he's grown into the personality and character that he always thought he would be. And I'm talking about football character. And also as a people character where he looks very humble. He looks very, I think, very approachable. Uh, and he's not one of those characters who, 
he takes the game for granted or the moment for granted. Do you know what I mean? I think he, he understands how special football is and how important it is to so many different people. I just wonder, you mean you've had a great career, you, you're the most successful Rochdale manager there's ever been. You've been at Barnsley, Bolton. I know how much you love the game, Keith. Will you yeah. take particular pride in, if City were to lift the Champions League, will you be have particular pride because of your connection with, with him at the beginning of his career? I just think it, as a football person, it's something that I want to see. Uh, supporting John, supporting the way that Man City play. We're talking about generational football here. We're talking about the last time a treble was achieved by an English club was 1999. So it's not something that happens, you know, every year and something that everybody should be getting used to. It's a very, very special opportunity that Manchester City in this current era have made uh, because of the football that they're playing and the successes that they've had. And they're in the moment. And I really do hope that this is another one of those footballing moments for English football as well as Man City, well, as well as for John personally, where it can be achieved. But there's still a lot of work to do playing against Inter Milan. You think they'll do it? I certainly believe they can do it. And again, every, everybody talks about moments and everything has to be aligned in your favour. And I just hope this is the season that, uh, you know, it can be achieved again for an English club and for Man City. And obviously, you know, from a personal perspective, you know, having seen John play as an 18-year-old and gave him his debut all the way through to what he's achieving now, it will be very, very special indeed.